Hi, I'm Hazefest. Today I am going to be walking you through a uh, auto hotkey tutorial specifically for Dark Age of Camelot. I've been playing this game on the Phoenix Free Shard server for a little while and a few of the people that I've been helping have uh, requested that I start making some videos to kind of show them what auto hotkey is, how to use it, and uh, answer some very basic questions. Um, I've been using this program for about two months and uh, gotten pretty, pretty familiar with it as far as what I can do with it on Phoenix. So here is going to be a breakdown of what we are going to uh, be looking at today. <clears throat> Auto hotkey and what it is. Is it legal? Can we actually use it on the Phoenix server without getting banned? We're going to be looking at how to set it up and we're going to be looking at uh, the script itself and I'll walk you through what the script says, what everything means. Um, if you actually download Auto Hotkey, let's bring it over here on the screen, you'll come to this welcome screen here. This is the first thing that pops up when you download it and actually run Auto Hotkey. Um, there's a lot of great information in here if you want to sit down and learn the program on your own. Um, but if you just want to skip this, uh, you can move ahead in the video. I'll put timestamps and descriptions in the video, but there's a lot of great information here. This is where I learned a lot of information, but I'm going to put uh, web links to everything that you're going to need, all the references that you're going to need to make your own scripts, or you can just use the ones that I provide. So AutoHotKey is basically a program that allows you to synchronize multiple key presses, you can do loops, you can do timers, you can do delays, you can do a lot of fun stuff with it, but specifically for Phoenix, we can only use this program to punch in multiple button presses with a single keystroke. That means you cannot do anything super fancy, it's just going to be I hit a single key and then the script runs A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That's how it's going to work. So all the scripts that I'm going to show you are going to be completely legal on Phoenix. And what I'm going to walk through is uh, is what I do, how I make my scripts, common things that you can do with it, how to troubleshoot these scripts, and things like that. So um, if you come into this auto hotkey help window, there's a lot of great information in here and you can spend hours in here learning all kinds of new stuff. But for the basics that I'm going to show you, you're not going to need this at all because I'm going to walk you through step by step. Let me go ahead and show you what the scripts actually look like. Uh, so these are the scripts. The one we're going to be, one of the ones we're going to be looking at today is our armsman one. I believe it's now on the screen. It is. So if I go back to Dark Age Camelot, it's still on the screen. Now, what we're looking at here is the script itself. Now, there's a lot of information on here that looks intimidating, but let me walk you through it. The very top line is just the name I have associated with the file. Okay. The next thing is going to be this whole set. What this does is if this window or this program, which is Dark Age of Camelot, is running on your computer, this script will run. That means if your game crashes, if you exit the game, then this script will stop working, pause, you will not have to worry about it messing with your buttons outside of the game. And if you see a colon colon, such as this numlock colon colon, what this is saying is I press shift, which is the plus, numlock, and it will suspend or toggle. It'll either suspend or resume the script. So you can toggle this script 
at whim. So if you don't want to be using your script, you don't have to. You can turn it on, you can turn it off. It doesn't matter. This next line here, anything with a semicolon and then uh, data after, such as the top, that is not going to be conducive to the script. It doesn't matter what you put here. This is just information as far as what you want to call each one of your blocks. Your blocks being from the first semicolon down to the return. So for this block, I've named it the one hand style with Perry chain. That means when I press the one button, which is what is before the colon colon, it's the button you assign so that when you press, it'll send this string of code, which is going to be your cue binds in your game or your hotkeys in the game. What this means is I press B to swap to my one hand and my uh, shield for this character. And then it puts in F5, F6, and home. Those are actual cue binds inside Dark Age of Camelot. And then it stops. Okay, so if you look over to that way, I press a single button. You see that it says I attempt to use my hammer and then I try to use three styles. That is my one button. That is exactly what you see. That is exactly what you see here in this first line. That's all it does. So I'm going to go ahead and try to engage. So when I come over to an enemy, I'll just show you what my one key does. Go ahead and pull the enemy to us. This is a tank, in case you haven't figured that out yet. So I try to perform a concussion. So this is my anytime style with a backup of if I parry, it'll just go right into my parry style. So all I'm doing is spamming one, and you can see in my combat log what's going on. So what's happening is I've put the styles in backwards. So if I actually show you my cue binds here, what's happening is I'm hitting a single keystroke. It's using my after parry style then my after, uh, using my after parry chain first, and then it's using my anytime style. So if I go to my hotbar here, it's using bludgeon, concussion, which is my after parry, and then bone crusher, which is after concussion. So it's using them in the reverse order. So it's going three, two, one on this bar. And when you're using auto hotkey, it doesn't matter what bars you have visible on your screen. It's going to use the same cue binds no matter what. And if you're not familiar with cue binds, I'll go over that in a little while. But here's my cue bind setup for this character. And all this data right here is actually what's showing up in the script that I create. If we look at number two, the one below that says slam, what that does is it... When I press the two key, it doesn't matter what weapon I have out. So if I have my two handed weapon, I have my pole arm, I have my crossbow, doesn't matter. If I hit two, it's going to swap to my shield and my main hand and it's going to slam automatically. So it's an instantaneous effect. Um, this is great because if you're someone who swaps weapons frequently, you can swap weapons and then go right back into a style in less than a second. It's as fast as the game will register, which is faster than humanly possible. So a great thing about this is if I combine two with five, uh, so B is my main hand, F8 would be slam, and then five, when I press that, it swaps to my two-handed weapon with N, my F1 button is stick, and then F11 and page down would be my back styles. So... What I'll show you, this looks like in game. If I pull the enemy, you can pretty much kill a mob, non player character, in just a few seconds. So you slam it, go behind, hit five, it automatically faces, it goes right into a back style. So we've already got the mob to half life. Hit two again, it'll slam. Go behind, go back into the uh, back styles. So, 
that's what it looks like if you want to quickly swap between weapons if you have let's say sword and board and you have a two-handed weapon so you can use the side style you can use this in pvp to slam an opponent get to the side and start wrecking them with high damage side styles and it's good that you can bind these to a mouse you can bind these to the keyboard you can bind these to f keys uh, this program does work on Mac as well as Windows. It's just Mac has less hotkey options in Dark Age of Camelot than a normal PC would. So auto hotkey is great because you can take a character that uses three, four, five different bars and you can condense them down to a single bar. So if you're an infiltrator and you have your styles on three bars, you can literally make it one bar, which is fantastic for many reasons. You know, a lot of people in the older generation, they can't spam eight keys in two seconds. Well, this program allows you to do that. And it'll be consistent every single time, which means it's pretty reliable. In a single key press on this particular script I can press a single button right here it'll pull out my bow target the enemy and fire a crit shot so in a single key you can have seven inputs or more doesn't really matter I feel like I do no damage We look at the script for the scout, and we look at my crit shot. So if we look at the crit shot here, it's sending BHF, which is swapped to my main hand swap to my bow, face the target, fire crit shot, fire crit shot a second time so it automatically fires, and then F9, and then H. So it single key press, swaps to my bow. Even if I have my bow out, you'll see my character swap to my main hand, swap to my bow. That way, no matter what I'm doing, it'll automatically do the script properly. So it targets the enemy, crit shots, automatic releases, and automatically reloads. So then all I have to do is hit my one key in order to continue firing. It's pretty handy. Now, if an enemy does get close enough to me, let's say a stealther jumps on me, I have it set so that my number two key swaps to my melee weapon and slams. Missed. So it just used stop, which is a uh, a different shield style than slam. I swapped my keys around. So four is slam, two is stop. So stop roots the enemy so that I can get away if it's an enemy player. Uh, hopefully they'll burn purge and then I can use slam to run away if I if I have to So let's say this is an enemy stealther they pop jump on me. I hit two I run away They can't move They burn purge get on me again, then I can hit four and run away safely That's the kind of stuff that you can do with auto hotkey and if the enemy's far away, you can try crit shotting them again if they're if they're stunned. Drop them that way. Another good thing you can use this for is like chance. I have one for my paladin. My paladin uses chance. So if I close this script, I have two screens, but for this video, I put all of my stuff on the single screen so you can see what it is. So on a Paladin, uh, you can use a single key press and you can see at the top here, I get 11 chance. And I can do that every eight seconds. 
So if I look down at the bar, I see these three refresh. I know I can immediately do it again. And I get all the all the chance up. And I can do this every eight seconds. And the buff lasts for six seconds. So if I come here to my defenses, you can see if I hit the button, I get 52 resistances to a lot of things, 57 heat resists for six seconds. And that's party wide. And not only that, but I get a damage increase, I get armor increase, and I get a heal every six seconds. So that's the kind of stuff that you can do with Auto Hotkey. I mainly use it for putting multiple styles on a single button. And I use it for casters. On casters, you can put dual purpose buttons. So let's say you have a, a fire wizard. Your one can be your fire bolt. Your two can be your second fire bolt. And the alternate options for friendlies is you can target somebody and give them a buff with your one or a damage shield with your two. Uh, you can also do this for self buffs, but I do not recommend it for self buffs because if you're not targeting an enemy, you'll cast the wrong spell. Uh, a better concept would be is if you're on a minstrel or a bard, you can use your mez key, your single target mez, and you can also use your single target demez on that same button. So if you're targeting an enemy, you'll mez them. If you're targeting an ally, you'll demez them. Stuff like beneficial spells. You would have to have an offensive and a defensive. So if, you're, uh, if your heal class can stun the enemy, you can do a stun or you can do like a cure disease. Uh, for my friar, I put my cure near sight and my taunt on the same button. Now that we've kind of gone through some of the stuff that auto hotkey can do, let me show you where to get the key. If you just type in auto hotkey, it's the first thing, autohotkey.com. It'll take you here to this website. You would click download. You would click download current version. That's important. When you click download the current version, it will download to your um, downloads key, uh, your downloads folder. If you don't know where to find that, most browsers, if you press Control and J, it'll take you right to your downloads. So if you click the button, it disappears for any reason. Click Control plus J. It'll bring you here, and you can just click Show in Folder, and that'll take you exactly where you need to be. Or once you download the program, it'll probably pop up with this, but you're going to need to reboot your computer just to be able to see the program when you actually download the auto hotkey scripts or any .ahk file you need to see this H on it if you don't see the H on your script just right click on it say open with if you don't see auto hotkey in this list you can choose another application and you should see auto hotkey in the other options here if you don't go to more apps and find it in your in your computer. Once you highlight it like it is here, once you highlight the program, make sure you check always use this app to open .ahk files. And that'll save you a lot of problems later on. And it will also give icons with the H on all of your auto hotkey scripts. You're going to right click on it and you're going to say run as administrator. That will allow the program to overwrite whatever you have uh, in the background. So if you're playing Dark Age of Camelot, it will actually use the appropriate key presses and the function buttons and whatever you're going to use in your script. I created this, which is like a, a Bible to someone who's new. Um, it breaks down what you can put here. So you can put the name of the class of whatever script you're making. And then these are examples of what modifiers you can use. So control F1 would look like this little up arrow, which is the shift six key, and then F1. 
so that would be control F1 in your script. Uh, if you want to do Q, you could do Alt Q. Alt signifiers are the exclamation point. Insert by itself would look like INS. Page up would look like page down. Shift and numlock, which is what I use personally to toggle my stuff on and off as I'm playing Dark Age of Camelot, is plus numlock. So shift is the plus modifier. And then I broke it down here. Uh, so you can see this is what I pressed to toggle a script. So it would just be this data here. So I'll probably put a blank script in the description of the video. That way, if you want to download this, you can set this character to be whatever. You could be F10, F11, whatever you want it to be to toggle on and off your script. Um, this little semicolon uh, is what you would actually name the text box. And then here, again, colon, colon, all this big text here is just saying you can name this whatever you want. It can be one, Q, shift Q, alt Q, doesn't matter. Um, and then two and nine are just examples of what you can do. The cure, poison, and taunt is two spells on a uh, friar. So if you wanted to do like something you target an ally and cast and something you target an enemy and cast, you can make that the same button. So it, it's only condition is whatever you're clicking on at the time because you can't cast friendly spells on enemies and you can't cast enemy spells on friends. And then if you're doing styles, you just need to take the entire chain for, uh, for let's say after parry and after evade. If you want to put those on the same key, you can. So that would be four styles usually on one button. If you're playing a reaver, you can get up to seven on a single button. If you're playing uh, most other classes, it's going to be about four. So uh, ever since I've been using auto hotkey, I've been really enjoying it and it's made a lot of people's uh, play styles much easier, especially for the older generations. Uh, this game is super old, so the people who originally were around are in their 40s now most of the time um, or older, and they just can't keep up with the younger folks. So this is a great equalizer for a lot of people who are, are too old to mash all the buttons in the proper order every time. You just let the program do it for you. That's pretty much the basics of it. And... I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of people asking questions or people needing additional help. So if, if you're one of those people that aren't quite understanding, I've done a lot of one-on-one -on -one sessions with friends that I've met on Dark Age of Camelot. So if you need to reach out, just leave a comment on uh, down below on YouTube and uh, I'll comb through these comments. And if you're needing help, uh, we can get on Discord and I can walk you through one-on-one. -on -one a little bit better and we can tailor it to your specific play style. I've done this on a, uh, a person that uses a Mac. I've done this with a person that uh, has no computer literacy skills whatsoever. And uh, the younger generations, the kids that are my age or younger, uh, being mid thirties or below have a pretty good understanding of computer systems and typing and uh, are pretty open to learning. So, I've noticed that, but I'll put a blank uh, script out there so that you guys can modify and play around with it. Uh, if you're not sure you're doing it right, just take 30 minutes and go to the combat dummies and play around with it. That's what I had to do every time I made a new script. Or if I got a crazy idea in my head and wanted to uh, try something new, then that's what I would do. I would go to the dump combat dummies. I would take my theory, put it into my script, put it into my cue binds, and I would test it. If it worked, great. If not, I would tailor it. Um, I had to create infiltrator scripts for poisoning multiple weapon sets, doing perforate artery and backstab, and troubleshooting all that, which took several days because I personally don't play a stealth class. So I had to rely on other people who were using these scripts to give me feedback. So now that I got an understanding of stealth classes, I can pretty much make any script for any class. Um, as far as Dark Age of Camelot com 
is concerned. If you're having problems with auto hotkey not performing properly for Dark Age of Camelot, let me just get into the game real quick so I can show you what I mean. Okay. All right, so if you've just installed auto hotkey, you got your first script running and you've troubleshot it, it's working as intended and you have your Qbind set up. If you try to type something and you hit your buttons, like if I go, if you look in the chat there, if I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, it comes out as one B, 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 six, seven, eight, nine. So whatever keys or hot keys you're using in your scripts, I'm using my number keys for my actual button presses, but my Q binds are what it's firing off when I press those keys. My Q binds are set to letters, numbers, function keys, insert, down, delete, all that kind of stuff. So if I'm typing and I'm getting gibberish, that means I need to suspend my program with shift numlock and then I can type properly with my numbers. So if you're typing gibberish and you can't figure out why, you need to suspend your script and then you can just turn it right back on and then single single key press and you're good to go. So you make a change, you're modifying stuff. In the bottom right of the system tray, you already have one hotkey running. Well, if you're making changes, you normally get the parentheses one um, and then you got to run this one. So now you have two scripts running and then you're still making changes, doing tests. But if I toggle with shift numlock and then look down at the system tray, what happens usually is both of these scripts will flip flop on and off. And if it seems like your scripts never turning off, or never turning on, it's probably because you have more than one script running. So what I recommend is you go in to your system tray and you exit all of your scripts and then find the script that you want to run. Get rid of the one that's bad. We'll run the one that's good. Run it for administrator. And it's immediately turned on and then you just test it in the game. So it's working. Apparently I have errors in the script. So if you look at error line 13, so you count it down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. We can see that there's error. It actually tells you the line text of the error, which is SS doesn't need to be there. So you say, okay, file save. And then you try to run it again. It's gonna tell you there's an error again because return 44 is not an actual script. So we get rid of the 44, save, say okay, run it, no errors that time. We can actually see in the system tray that it's here, it's working, and uh, yeah, once you go back into the game, everything should be fine. You just click on your character, test your script, it's working again. So Q binds, in the game, if you do slash Q, as in Quaker, bind, you'll get a little menu that pops up. The menu that pops up tells you the command backslash qbind and then what quick bar, what slot number on that quick bar, and what number quick bar button. Okay, so it shows you an example of how to qbind one, two, one. That means uh, quick bar one. So if you look at the number with the chevrons on the far left. It's probably hard to see there at the bottom. It's a little white one with the chevrons. If you hover over it, it'll tell you which quick bar is which. You can have up to three showing at one time. And I usually start on page five of quick bar one. I usually don't have to go more than three bars. So if you do slash Q bind, the first number represents the, uh, the page, as you can see, my script is on, so we pause our script. 
So number five, which is page one, slot one, and quick bar one. So that's the number consistency. So I'm doing QBind 511. If I hit enter, it's going to ask me to push a key that it's going to record as that button. The key that you press cannot already be used in the keyboard configuration. So if you have a key you would like to use, you have to make sure that key is cleared in the Dayoc keyboard configuration menu. So it asked me to press a key for quick bar five, slot one, quick bar one. We already have that set to control F1. If I try to use control F1, it says it's already bound to that slot, so I can't rebind the same key. So if I try again, I can set it to uh, control F10, I know can. Control F10 is now bound to bank number five, slot one, quick bar one. And if I do my slash Q bind button again, you can see that now it has updated as control F10. If you find yourself in a situation where your script is using the wrong key, you can just go into the Q bind and change it to the right key, control F1, and then you can test your script again. If you've already set up all of your Q binds, all of your quick bars, you can just move your styles and your spells around on that bar. So instead of using thistle, it'll use rat fang, it'll use whatever style you put in that place. So if you already set up your cue binds the way that you want them, you can just manipulate what goes in those slots to fire off different abilities with the same key press. So if you get to the point where you're using anytime styles and you want to swap to taunt styles if you're a tank, or if you want to swap to detente styles to kind of improve your survivability, you can do that. If you want to change from an anytime or an after evade to an anytime to a after parry, you can do that. It's really up to you. But what does that look like if I wanted to use 542? That would use this button right here. It'd be the second quick bar, button number four on page five of the second quick bar. So it's always page number, number one to 10, whichever on that bar you want to put the style or the spell on. And then the last number is always gonna be one, two, or three for quick bar one, quick bar two, quick bar three. So I always stick with five, one, one to seven, 10, one. I don't really go past page five, six, and seven of my first quick bar unless uh, I just have a ridiculous amount of buttons to use. Um, the only thing I can think of that has that many buttons is probably a buff cleric or some sort of healer that has to buff everybody individually. Um, but Q binds, they're not difficult to understand. And if you have a problem where you need to unbind something, you can use slash Q unbind that same number string and it will remove the hot uh, hot key that you put there if you need to use it for something else. So on my Paladin, if I show you the script, you can see here that my chants are set to my button. Well, it was running this string and it was failing about here. The button that I had in this slot before overlapped with my uh, with my combat. So when I was pressing my chance, it would run through this. It would miss one about here every once in a while, and it would use a taunt style when I didn't want it to. Or it would use a shield slam when I didn't want it to. Something like that. So if you're running into an issue where your script is working 80% of the time, but every once in a while it misfires, uh, you might want to consider changing whatever the misfire key is because it's overlapped with uh, a similar hotkey.
So instead of control F11, it would be F just F11. And that was probably what's causing the problem. So you can either change the control modifier or you can change the F11 key that's on the other script right here. So if this executes, gets to here and fires this by accident, that's okay because it only happens 20% of the time. But if that's if that 20% is too much, if you want guaranteed results, you just change one of these two function keys. Once people start making inquiries, I will answer their questions and show them how they're done as needed. But yeah, appreciate it.